Greetings, greetings, travelers. It is Friday, July 3rd, which means it's time for a little 3 o'clock coffee, our little news segment where we pick a couple of articles that we found interesting or just interesting science occurrences and talk about them in brief if it's during the week or over the weekend. Things we think you should know. And, of course, we're going to start off with the lunar eclipse of this weekend. It's going to be on July 4th. This article kind of downplays it a lot. Don't expect to see much. Even if you don't see much, it will be pretty cool. We are going to be looking at uh, the moon crossing into just the edge of the Earth's shadow. Uh, the bullseye-looking vectors in this image represent the Earth's shadow. You've got the umbra in the middle. You've got the penumbra around the outside edge, and you'll notice the moon clipping just along the edge of the penumbra. About 40% of the moon, it looks like. Uh, it's not going to be a super impressive uh, lunar eclipse because it's not a total lunar eclipse. It's just a partial one. Uh, it will be visible throughout uh, most of North America. Let's zoom in a little bit. There we go. Uh, North America and South America, as well as uh, western parts of uh, Africa. And part of the eclipse will be visible in like Spain, Portugal, uh, extreme western edge of Europe. So that's what's going on with this map right here. So if you're out this weekend and you have a good clear sky on the 4th of July, take a look up at the moon. If you're looking at the right time, you want to look uh, for your local moonrise time, things like that. But there will be an eclipse uh, this weekend. So do take a, take a moment and try to see that if you can. Uh, jumping back, uh, let's talk about spacewalk. Well, so... Couple months, a couple weeks back, we had a you know big celebration in, in Hoopla over SpaceX launching a couple of NASA astronauts into space. Uh, there was a bunch of cargo with them, and a bunch of cargo has arrived uh, from other uh, orbiters that have gone up there. And one of the big things was upgrading the batteries. Uh, the batteries on board the space station have been getting pretty old. Uh, they collect sunlight with these solar arrays and they charge up these batteries so that when they're behind the planet Earth and they can't see the sun, they can still do their jobs. Uh, over time, they get uh, degraded and have to be replaced. So, of course, gotta put new ones in. Well, it went well for the most part. The batteries were replaced with newer high-tech models, uh, so they should last longer and charge better. There was one little incident uh, with this spacewalk. Um, there's some extra space debris now. Uh, one of the astronauts actually uh, broke. They, they they have these mirrors on their on their forearms, so they can see kind of ahead, you know, behind them and around them when they're when they're working on stuff. Because when you're in space, it's kind of hard to move around a lot in these spacesuits. Well. They had an astronaut break off a piece of a mirror, or the actual full mirror off their wristband, and it floated away. And so there's now just this mirror floating around uh, that will eventually uh, descend to the Earth and burn up in the atmosphere. So, RIP mirror. <laughs> Speaking of burning up, uh, there's comets in the sky again. I know we've talked about comets a few times on our Friday... Uh, news pieces, and we've also talked about comets in our uh, sky updates when they are they are visible. Now, well, there's two comets. One's now called Neowise, and the other one's called Lemon. Uh, they are in the sky at the moment, and one's going to be visible at dusk, supposedly. The other's going to be visible at dawn, supposedly. And I say supposedly because, well, we had high hopes for Comet Atlas and Comet Swan, and, well, they both just didn't do anything all that important. They didn't light up. They didn't become visible uh, to the naked eye where you can just walk outside and look at it. Uh, Neowise looks like it's going to be visible in the northeast. And eh, we'll see if it actually gets, gets any brighter. It's going to be in the north-northeast, kind of towards uh, Ursa Major, the Big Bear. Uh, so if it is visible, it should be visible throughout the, the evening sky. Uh, lemon will be in the morning, it looks like. And uh, again, it's hard to predict how these are going to look like. This is a picture of Comet Lemon, so it does look really, really pretty. 
and I really hope that it gets to be visible to the point where you don't need a telescope to see it, but this is from a telescope. Uh, this is what we're hoping will light up. Uh, this one's going to be, you know, hopefully visible to all of us soon. It's hard, I, I don't know, it, it, it's hard for me to really talk about comets because I don't want to hype them up and be like, yeah, it's going to be great, and then nothing ever happens. They either light up or they don't. This is actually from the SOHO Observatory, the Solar and Heliospheric Observatory. This is the sun right here with a disk blocking out the sun so we can see the corona around it and uh, the comet heading towards the sun. Uh, normally, when comets start heading towards the sun, they get brighter and brighter and brighter. Uh, if they get too close, they could break up into pieces, uh, which we saw a couple times so far this year. Uh, otherwise, they may just get brighter and brighter and brighter and then go behind the sun and maybe never come back out. They burn up and that's it. They actually get pulled into the sun and melted and disintegrate and that's it. Uh, other times they do come out the other side, but they're a little bit dimmer as they've lost a lot of mass and they go back out to the edge of the solar system and freeze back up into big balls of ice and rock. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on this and probably next week do an update uh, to that. Uh, speaking of update, we do have another Mars Perseverance rover update. NASA has coyly not put this information on the official website, but I can tell you that the rover has been delayed. Again, the rover's ready to go. The launch window is closing. This rover has to be up in space and on its way by the 11th of August, or else the window is closed and it won't get to Mars. Or if it does get to Mars, it'll miss and we have to wait longer before we launch it in the first place. So, uh, kind of an unfortunate situation. Uh, hopefully they can get this rover launched soon. Uh, I believe the target is by the 30th of this month, so we've got a couple of days, a couple of weeks, I should say, uh, before we launch this thing. And if you've never seen the mission overview, I'll leave a link down below. Uh, this rover is actually going to have... A, this really cool landing sequence where you'll have a sky crane. So this top part is actually going to have uh, thrusters that light up when it gets too close to the ground. They literally just kind of kind of drop the rover on the surface. That's how they did it with Curiosity. They're going to do it with this one as well. The Mars Exploration rovers, on the other hand, uh, they actually had a, a huge capsule around them, uh, which bounced around on the surface and was one of the most harrowing things to, to listen to. Uh, to the telemetry of that coming in. Uh, but yeah, going back to Mars, can't wait to see it. Hopefully it happens sooner than later. Uh, I'm hoping sooner. But yeah, that's it. Only picked a couple articles this week. Wanted to make this one not necessarily short, but uh, concise. Uh, if you do have any questions, I, I think I've got the comments finally working on the site. Uh, YouTube, I know, has a thing going on where if you you mark your article, or your article, your video, uh, safe for kids, and all of a sudden all the comments go away. So if you could, leave me a comment down below uh, just so that I know that the comments are actually working, and uh, we'll go from there. Um, we do our updates every month uh, for the sky, so every first of the month, give or take, I'll be uploading a video if you haven't seen this month's. Uh, July sky update is up and available. Uh, other things, uh, more housekeeping. Um, ah, uh, yes, that's the other thing. So we are doing, or at least attempting to now, do a Monday planetarium show, or at least kind of a freeform show, uh, every Monday at 11 o'clock uh, Mountain Standard Time. So that's... Uh, every Monday from 11 to 1 o'clock local time for me. Uh, we're hoping to do this every Monday. Uh, the first half hour or so is going to be a planetarium show uh, done through a software package that we call Stellarium. Uh, it's not we. I didn't do anything with it. I just downloaded it and I use it. Uh, it's a package called Stellarium, and uh, we'll do a planetarium show. Show you around the sky, show you how to find your way around, You know, do your standard uh, what you would receive at a planetarium, since a lot of theaters are closed, uh, we figured we would offer that to all of you out there in the internets. Um, after that first half hour or so, I'll probably switch to doing a little more in-depth on certain topics, uh, depending on who is asking about what uh, in the chat. 
And then for the last hour or so, it's kind of a free form question and answer session. Um, last week we did a good two hour long show, uh, which was unexpected for a very short notice, uh, short notice thing. So, uh, if you could, uh, please click over on twitch.tv and like, and subscribe to our channel over there, Urgent Education. And, uh, again, every Monday we're going to be doing live planetarium shows. So if you could, we would appreciate it. We'd love to see you there can't make it it's okay i might be doing them on wednesdays as well this might become a, a more regular thing planetariums are shut down right now and i have the ability to do it with this and so uh but that's going to be the goal we'll be improving the way that the site looks uh, because right now it's pretty bare bones but we'll get there in any case we hope you have a wonderful friday and have a wonderful weekend uh, please stay safe uh, take care of yourselves and those around you. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Have a great afternoon. Have a great evening. Have a great morning, wherever you happen to be. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night now.